Welcome. The extended common filter is a very famous implementation of the base filter. The EKF is widely used because it extends the common filter to a more general setting by handling nonlinearities. Let's see how it's derived from the base filter and how it relates to the common filter. Recalling the base filter taxonomy, the EKF is considered a Gaussian filter and is the second out of four Gaussian filters we will discuss. In this model setup, we see that it is more general compared to the common filter. Instead of having linear motion and sensor models, we are able to handle nonlinearities in our f and g functions. Other than that, the notation is all the same, and we still require the normal distributions on the initial state and noise. I'm placing the slide for the base filter algorithm for convenience. Feel free to pause and review, but again, the main steps we need to do are to derive the prediction and correction step. Okay, so in the prediction step, we will proceed as we did in the common filter. We use the motion model to compute p of xt given xt minus 1 and ut. Since we are given xt minus 1 and ut, if we freeze this in our motion model, we see that the resulting probability distribution is simply the random variable wt shifted up by a constant. So we start with p of wt, which is a Gaussian, and end up with a distribution that has the same covariance as wt, but now has a mean of f of xt minus 1 ut. Now we have the integral of two normal distributions that both depend on xt minus 1. But now, unlike in the common filter, we have an issue. The mean of the first Gaussian may not be linear in xt minus 1, which means that lt may not be quadratic. Hence, we can't find a nice decomposition, which means we may not have a resulting Gaussian distribution. We're going to use linearization to overcome this roadblock. Here's a brief calculus review of linearization. The first case is when our function f maps from real to real. We linearize our function around the point a, then estimate other points using the derivative at a. This is equivalent to picking a point along our function f, then drawing the tangent line at that point. This is our approximated function. Case 2 is when f maps from rn to r. Very similar to case 1, we simply take the gradient of f instead. To visualize this, imagine when n is equal to 2. We pick a point on f, then draw a tangent plane, not the tangent line, the tangent plane, to that point. Case 3 is the most general case. f maps from rn to rm, and this is often the case we use. Here we need to compute the Jacobian of f, which consists of every possible first order derivative combination. Now let's go back and look at this first term. We want to linearize it. The obvious choice for our linearization point is around mu t minus 1 and u t. We'll see that since u t is constant, it goes away, so we only need to compute the Jacobian portion with respect to x t minus 1, which we will denote as f t minus 1. This lets us arrive at the linearized form of the mean. If we look closely at this linearized form, it is the same as in the common filter, except instead of our A matrix that was given to us in the model setup, we now have an F matrix that was computed from our motion model through linearization. Thus, the derivation process would be exactly the same as in the common filter. Now, in the correction step, we again notice that the mean of the first term may not be linear in xt. Thus, we apply the exact same linearization procedure. This time, our point of linearization is mu t. Then we follow the exact same derivation as in the common filter to arrive at these equations. Putting the common filter next to the extended common filter, we see the resemblance is uncanny. Even though we are dealing with a much more general problem, the only extra step we need to do is to compute our f and g matrices through linearization of the motion and sensor models. Every other step of the derivation remains the same. Now, before we get too excited and start using the EKF, there are two practical considerations for effective usage. These practical considerations revolve around when the linearization is accurate. First, let's consider two different Gaussian distributions. The top one has a greater variance than the second one. In the middle, we have our function g, which we want to pass our Gaussian distributions through. The right two plots show the resulting distributions. The gray shading in these plots is the true resulting distribution. We obtain this true distribution using Monte Carlo estimation. This means we pass the millions of p of x samples into our nonlinear function, then we plot it. From this gray distribution, the best possible Gaussian estimate is a solid line in black. Our EKF approximation is the dotted black line. Between the two plots, we notice that the bottom one is a significantly better approximation. To be precise, in general, 
a large variance distribution will result in a worse approximation because this distribution is exposed to a larger range of nonlinearities, but it is possible for it to be better. Consider this case when the immediate local approximation at 0, 0 is poor, but the area farther away from this linearization point happens to be a good, in this case perfect, estimate of the actual function. This would result in a better EKF approximation with the larger variance input Gaussian distribution. However, this is a contrived case, which is why I say in general, larger variances tend to be worse when we consider any possible nonlinear function. The next consideration deals with the degree of nonlinearity. Here we are passing in two of the same variance Gaussian distributions into the same transformation function g of s, but we are linearizing it in different locations. By inspection, the second linearization point results in a very accurate local estimation of g of x. Thus, the resulting distribution is much more aligned with the best Gaussian estimate. This is seen as the dotted and solid black lines are nearly on top of each other. Now you're ready to use the EKF! The next video will discuss the uncensored common filter, which is another method to tackle nonlinearities that does not involve linearization. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.